What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we have Jay Sutton. You actually have your own podcast. Yes. This is right behind us. It's just showing doubt. Go ahead and just let people know where they can find you or anywhere you want people to go follow you on. Um, Instagram at this is Jay Sutton. You can follow me uh, there or on Facebook at Jay Sutton. YouTube at Jay Sutton. So it's pretty, pretty simple. And destroying doubt podcast. You can find that on pretty much any podcast platform. Today, I'm going to be talking to Jay about joining with an open contract because when he joined the Air Force back in 2014, he joined as open mechanical. Yeah. I didn't join as open mechanical, though I had a mechanical job. So I'm just kind of run you through some questions, maybe help some other people out there that are getting stuck with an open mechanical contract and then they don't know what they're going to be doing. So we're going to go ahead and help you guys out right now. You're currently out of the Air Force yes. now. Yes. And how long were you in and what rank were you when you got out? I was in for about three years and I got out as Chief Master A1C of Air Force. <laughs> Basically, he was just an A1C for a long time, like when you're almost a senior airman. So when you first joined, what was one of the reasons or the main reasons why you were joining the Air Force? Because I think this is good for people when they're looking into, okay, what jobs do I want to do in the Air Force? kind of understanding other people's reasons for joining in the first place. So yeah. what was the reason why you even wanted to sign a contract? If I had to put a percentage on it, probably like 90% school. I was working a job that I hated and I was making good money at this job and I had worked my way up. I wasn't doing something that I wanted to do yeah. for a living. And I realized that school would help me get to where I wanted to go and to do what I wanted to do. So my wife actually had a lot of college debt and I didn't want to add to that. So. Mil so military. Like, How am I going to get free schooling and not rack up debt? And you're yeah. like, military. Yeah, and actually it was a Marine that worked under me um, at my job that talked to me about the military. I never thought about it before. He was like, you should join the Air Force, so... I gave it a shot. I like how the Marine guy is like, yeah, just go Air Force. Just, yeah. Absolutely. Like, no no thoughts about it. Just just Air Force. Yeah. <laughs> Other 10% of that was I was always the youngest person. Although I joined the military older, mm -hmm. I was always the youngest person kind of in charge in the civilian world. Gotcha. And I was, I felt like I was always the smartest person in the room. And I always heard about how smart the Air Force was. So I wanted to be around people that were a lot smarter than me. I wanted to be uncomfortable. I wanted to be around young people that were smarter than me. So gotcha. that's another reason why I joined. That's a cool mindset. It didn't turn out that way because <laughs> I found out there's, there's some dummies in the Air Force too, but you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so first thing I do want to say for everybody that's watching this is you're more likely to get an open contract when you join the Air Force anyways. About 60% of the jobs or so that come out to recruiters are open. They're not a specific job. And the recruiters can only work with the jobs that the big Air Force sends them. So if Big Air Force is saying, hey, we just fill these open contracts, there's nothing more that your recruiter can really do. So odds are you're probably going to get offered an open contract. So just keep an open mind to that. We'll get more into the selection process of your job once you get an open contract. But just be aware that like open contracts aren't the worst thing in the world. Uh, but I mean, they're not the best, obviously, because you don't have a said job. But they're is a really low chance of you getting the exact job that you want because Big Air Force isn't always throwing those exact jobs out at the moment. So when you were in depth and your recruiter hit you with an open mechanical contract, were you just like, all right, cool, let's do this? Or did you have any concern for it? Or why did you end up signing in the end? I think that I wanted to do air traffic control. I think that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's not a job that you can just easily <laughs> get or whatever. Yeah. And so he he would call me every so often because uh, you can only be in a debt for how long? Like a year. I think like yeah. a year. And every few months he would call me. He was like, you want to leave? Uh, he called me at work. Like I have to like duck off. Uh, and it's the recruiter. I'm like, uh, yeah. He's like, you want to leave like tomorrow? I'm like, tomorrow? I'm like, what's the job? He said, um, constructions and pavement or something like that. I'm like, no. <laughs> and he would call a few months later and it was some other crappy job. And... He was like, look, the last time he called me, he was like, look, your time is ending up, yeah. it's ending in a debt. Um, I have open mechanical for you or whatever. Do you want to do that? And I was like, sure. Sure. Because <laughs> he pretty much put it like, if you don't take this, we're going to put you out of debt. Yeah. So I was like, all right, cool. So I was going to ask you how long you were in debt for, but you said pretty much almost a year. Yeah. You were running up on that, that end time. So yeah. I was actually in debt for 11 months as well. Oh, wow. So my recruiter was like pushing to finally get me a job contract when I joined. There is going to be that kind of rush. Like if they've been waiting for months and months, months trying to get you that job that you want and it never comes through, 
Like they, they either have to just give you something or depth discharge you and then you have to redo everything again. And a lot of recruiters are just like, it's too much work. Like, why am I gonna keep working with this person for years possibly when they're not gonna accept a contract? So that's something you have to keep in mind. So yeah, with you, you were like, uh, might as well just sign it because yeah. you don't want to go through all that process and keep waiting away. You just start putting it off at that point. So at basic training, when you got there, when did you pick your jobs? Like they let you decide what you wanted to do and how did you, if you remember, because I know that was a while ago, but how did that process go? And then when did you find out your job? I can't actually remember the entire process. I do remember picking jobs and I didn't, I was talking to people at depth and the, the people I were at depth with, they were like experts at picking jobs and all this other mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And they said, don't put certain mechanical jobs because you will get it if you put it. Yeah. And they were like, dude, go for NDI. This would be a good job, whatever. No dirt involved, go for NDI. And I was like, all right. So I put NDI, and I can't remember putting anything up. Do you remember how many options you get? Uh, I think like some people have said like they made you put like five or seven or ten. I can't remember. I think it changes over time. So I didn't join as Open Mechanics, so I didn't do any of that yeah. at, at BASIC. I think I just put NDI, and if I put something else, it was something that I knew I wouldn't get or something like that. Yeah, well, so, like, because I think with that, I, maybe they would let you submit, because, like, your dream sheet at basic training, when you submit it, you could put two things on your dream sheet. Yeah, that's true, it. yeah. And so they're like, but it's like, if you don't fill it out, like, you can't be mad about what you get if you don't get your number yeah, one. Yeah, that's right, yeah. It's like, they get to pick whatever they want to give you at that point, because you didn't give them a preference. Yeah. So I think, yeah, you, if you think you only put NDI, yeah, you probably weren't allowed to. Uh, but yeah. they're like, if you get something else, like, that sucks because that's what you yeah. chose. Like, I think I rolled the dice on that one. I, <laughs> I did the same thing with the what you said, the dream sheet, too. I yeah. just put, like, Florida, 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 and I, I got a Florida, so. Dang, you got lucky. Yeah, I did. I think right before you go to tech school, to, so, like, toward. Like, the, sixth or seventh week. Yeah, maybe. toward the end of basic training. Okay, so, and then when they told you you had that job, you were like, sweet, I got the job that I asked for. Yeah. So and the tech school was in Florida in Pensacola. So yeah, so you were all right there. You were like, oh sweet, yeah. You're like, Tyndall's what, like three hours away from Pensacola. But I didn't know I was going to Tyndall. No, I would be stationed here probably until halfway. Yeah, um, tech school or yeah. something like that. So that was cool. That was good news. You're like, man, I'm just staying all right here in a little panhandle. Yeah. We're good to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So what Jay did is only put one job. And you got your number one pick because that was the only job you put. Would you recommend that for other people? Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> I, was gonna say, I feel like he got really lucky and that can happen sometimes. But I would honestly recommend that you guys actually put a list of like full on jobs that you're willing to take. Because like we were just talking about, if they don't have that one job available, now it becomes everyone else that actually filled out their list, one through five or whatever, they're going to consider all their options because you didn't give them any other options to consider. So basically you're going to get the like last pick of the litter and nobody wants that. So definitely be sure to fill out your stuff accordingly in best case scenario to your least favorite that is still an option. So that way you're at least giving the Air Force some sort of knowledge of what you want rather than ha them having to just decide for you because that can end up really badly for some people. So Jay got lucky, but I would not suggest no. you do that no. if you're truly serious about it. I don't think you really had anything else in mind no. when you signed. You were just kind of like, whatever, like I'm just here. Yeah. So um, maybe that is your mindset, but even then I would say look into the jobs and kind of know what you want to do in the, in the open contract that you're getting. I just want to say do your research because I talk to people like family, friends, whatever, who had served in the military and people in my depth I was talking to. I've reached out to everyone I could and looked online and I think at the time people were telling me for whatever reason they needed people in NDI at the time. Mm -hmm. So I knew that if I put it, there was probably a good chance that I would get it. So do all the research, ask whoever you can, whatever question you can, so that, that'll probably help as well. What is your advice for somebody? I know what you kind of just gave was some advice, but what would be some other advice for somebody that's looking to possibly sign an open contract of some sort? Uh, how can we help them know what they're getting themselves into? Well, just know, have a good idea of what you want to do. So if you want to do NDI, it probably wouldn't be best for you to go open general. You yeah. know, uh, you want to be, if you know the, what, what are the 
Uh, what other open areas are there? I know there's open general, open mechanical, open, open administrative. Yeah, and then open electric. Open electric. So yeah. just have a general idea of where you want to go. Like, don't be wanting to go open electrical and go open mechanical because you're going to hate life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So just do your research and kind of figure out and hit around which area you want to work in and then go open in that one if that's what you choose to do or have to do. All right, guys. Well, we hope you appreciate this video. Maybe open your eyes a little bit to how the open mechanical contract works. And we hope to see you guys in our next pieces of content that we create.